Hey everyone, welcome to Self Publishing Podcast. Um, bit of breaking news on the Self Publishing Podcast. I don't, Sean, did you see the thing that Monica <laughs> posted in our company Slack on, in random? Did you happen to see that? Oh, is this about my one hand and talking? Yeah, so Sean talks with his hands, <laughs> but apparently only with his right. The entire, and, and she, she had this. He's only grid. half Italian. Yeah, she had this grid of nine like YouTube thumbnails, and it's just every single one. Sean's hands up, his I, right. You know what? Only. I've actually noticed that before, but now that somebody else has pointed it out, I'm gonna have there to. There it like, is. He's doing it right now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tie my hand behind my back. Okay. <laughs> and in all fairness to Sean, he uses his nose instead of his other hand. <laughs> that is true. I'm quite. But I'm bummed. My my. So, <laughs> t- today's guest is gonna be. Chris Fox, and Chris wrote a really cool book. Um, I thought we were having Megan Fox on. You all lied to me. Sorry. She saw the Whitney Moore Better Off on Dead episode. And oh, okay. <laughs> she that did makes not sense. need to be told that her feet are dirty. It right. was not, <laughs> not worth it to her. her. Her people said, please, Dave, stay away. So, uh, as they've been saying for years to Dave. So, um, Chris's book is called 5,000 Words Per Hour, Write Faster, Write Smarter. And it's, um, I mean, the title alone is just like, well, obviously, like, obviously we have to talk about, like, that's pretty cool. I want to know about that. So there you go. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just beat. Like, I'm just, uh, my mom was here this week, and so I wanted to get my words in, and so I woke up every day at, at 5 and sat down for four hours while my mom was here, and just, I made myself get my words in, and, and I did, but... I have nothing left. I have nothing left. I have very little sleep at this point. But you got your words in. <laughs> Chris will I be I got my you. words in, and it was it was a lot of words, because it wasn't just my normal words. It was like we're trying to... Um, here's a tip. Here's a tip for you self public. Audra will like this, because it's like a self-contained little story. Um, you can snip this out. Here's a tip to you writers out there, is setting artificial deadlines. Um, I set a... Um, but Sean and I do this all the time. It's like you'll have a deadline that just happens to be a number on a on a sheet. You know? <laughs> I love arbitrary deadlines. Right. Like that's that's all there is to it. There's no pre-sale deadline we need. I mean there is, but but not anywhere near as early as It's not as that it strict is. for this. <laughs> and so we uh, it's um the 24th, I think, or is something like that. And and or the 28th, I think is the the deadline that was on paper and I realized that we're going to um, we're going to Austin. We're going to meet in person. We've got people coming down for the stone table, and I think I leave on the 24th. And so I said, okay, that if I start, it gives me 13 days. And so I'm like, okay, so I guess I'm just going to haul ass because I, yeah, I could I could wait. I could let it go, but but that's no, going to suck to come shit. back to right. If you're like two chapters away from the end and you got to come back, like that's not that's not fun. So 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 set arbitrary deadlines. If you are the kind of person who is motivated by arbitrary deadlines, so but you... arbitrary deadlines, I mean, they they totally work for me. I I love them. You know, I have one. You know, the the devil may cry, which is our um, care, or, or sorry, the devil may care, um, which is our. Uh, there's a video game called the devil may cry. <laughs> That's where I'm getting that from. Minus um, the, the yeah. Um, so it's a. Uh, that's our book that we absolutely don't expect to sell, but we're writing it anyway. It's this our year. Axis of Aaron. It's our yeah, literary book. Right. It's our Axis of Aaron for this year. And um, I want to talk about it with Johnny in Austin when he's here in the same time, the 24th, 27th, whatever it is. And um, and so I'm, I'm busting ass to have beats done with that in enough time for him to have them and absorb them and... Um, so we can we can talk about that. And chances are we'll talk about a million other things and not even talk about that. Easily talk when we get back. I'd like to add a precautionary note on um, arbitrary deadlines, though, and that is, if you're Sean and me, they're they're great. If the, if you're Dave, then you go, <laughs> that's arbitrary. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what we should do to solve the eyes problems is just put pre-orders up on Amazon for everything. <laughs> just... No, you do not want to do that. <laughs> I will have a heart attack inside of a week. <laughs> that would be terrible. I thought you were going to say a heart attack inside of a heart attack, like Inception. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack and my heart is attacking. <laughs> Anyone oh. have something cool? Actually, yeah. I... Oh, go ahead, Dave. Dave doesn't usually say yes to that. I have one. <laughs> or too, anything, really. <laughs> Dave starts with no. <laughs> uh, Amazon Prime uh, series, Hand of God. Y'all have to go watch this. It, it, is this it the is one with Hellboy? Ron Perlman, yes. It is so awesome. Oh, I like Ron uh, Perlman. 
the 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 premise is it, it it's a judge it opens up uh with a judge and he's naked in a water fountain speaking in tongues uh awesome. my I, kind of movie no should open up like show. that he's obviously lost it and and you find out right away that his son had tried to kill himself and what follows is uh a, a mystery basically of how or why his son tried to kill himself because he, he's in a coma and uh, Ron Perlman's character believes that his son is talking to him through his coma trying to help him solve this but the, the thing I love about this so much is we, we were talking about anti-heroes uh, recently in one of our episodes and Ron Perlman's character is a is a corrupt judge he's a bad guy but you can't help but love him and his it's just so well done, and and it's got uh it's got character it's got uh the actor that plays a mayor it's from the wire uh he played uh oh I love the wire he played bubbles uh, <laughs> yeah and he's so good in it like every it, it, it's such a it's such a well written show it's gotten some crap reviews which I cannot understand why it, don't people like it like what do the crap I, reviews say it's probably the same people that don't like the fountain. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, just people said that the, the writing was clunky, and I I disagree totally. I think it's a very well made. Show. I think people are just crapping on it because it's Amazon, because it's not a Netflix series. I don't know. Uh, it, it was great. To, I I loved it. There was like one episode that I thought was okay. This one's a little slow, uh, but it's got my favorite things. It's got a corrupt guy. Uh, it's got uh children in jeopardy. It's got uh a uh, uh, a couple that are televangelist wannabes that are really, really sketchy. It's got everything I like. They, they like made it for me. Is it is it binge ready? Like, do they? Yeah, it's all ten, the episodes yeah. at once? Well, they did one episode. Like, they do pilot episodes. This is what I don't like about Amazon. Uh, they do like a pilot episode and wait for people to to vote on it. So they had one episode out for a year. I didn't see it then. I waited because uh, I don't want to watch something that won't be done. And they just released all ten episodes. Uh, like. Couple weeks ago, and yeah, it's I've ready to go. For it. it is so awesome. I'm just, I'm, I'm deep into Masters of Sex, so it'll be another week or so before I'm through. So <clears throat> mine this week is, um, this was interesting. So uh, as I mentioned, my mom was here, and so Robin and I were like, "Well, fuck yeah, I leave the kids with mom and go, let's go do stuff." So we went to see um, Trainwreck. And that movie oh, really like surprised that. me. I was like, because I, I thought it was going to be like, um, like, like Bridesmaids or something, which I, I, I really, I liked Bridesmaids, but you know, yeah, but Judd Apatow of, tries to say stuff in his movies. It was, sure. it was surprisingly uh, deep is the wrong word, but, but the, just the characters were were very good, and I, it, it had a lot of emotion behind it, and I, it sounds strange for me to be like, oh, you know, here, here's what you can learn from from Trainwreck, but. I kind of did. Like I was watching it with an author's eye. I was watching it with a storyteller's eye, and it was just really cool to see some of the things that that we do every day in fiction um, be in a you know in visual fiction in a in a movie theater. And 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 when we were there, I saw a poster for The Martian, which was also very cool <laughs> because we had Andy Weir on Self Publishing Podcast Classics. If you go and look, and um, just rooting for Andy and 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 Podium, who doesn't have anything to do with this directly, but you know the audiobook guys. That found that book. Um, I just I, wish I watched, all the luck uh, in the world. I watched that the Apple announcement this week, and The Martian was one of the sample movies they had on on. I guess it was for Apple TV. Maybe it was on the iPad Pro too, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was just like yeah. Martian's getting major coverage. So that, that was. So I fun. want that, but but that's that was my something cool was just the ability to do a few things within a genre. Um, I, I I didn't know it was Judd Apatow because I don't follow filmmakers until the end. In which oh. case, then it goes, you know, Judd Apatow film. And, and then it, it wasn't like it made me go, oh, Judd. Like, it, it made me go, oh, Did Sean. Did you see This is 40? Sean's always talking about Judd Apatow. No, I didn't. Oh, you, it, it's the same kind of vibe. Like, it's a comedy, but it's a, it's a <laughs> it's really... It's a comedy. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a really unofficial sequel to um, The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Um, where it's it has it's kind of shit we do where there's these like random walk on characters without Steve Carell in one movie right <laughs> um, but but yeah I, I think you'd really dig it um, if, in fact Johnny I, I highly recommend you watch it you'll, all right I will I will make a I will make a note Judd Apatow is definitely um, Paul Feig um, is the guy who made Bridesmaids and they both worked on Freaks and Geeks together 
Um, but Paul Feig is more like laugh out loud, you know, like Bridesmaids. Um, and he just did the one with Melissa McCarthy, Spy. But Judd Apatow, like he's clearly trying to say deeper, more layered things about the human condition in his comedies, even though he's kind of unafraid to go places. Oh my God, wasn't Amy Schumer hilarious? Like that's just a star turn. Like she's funny as shit. She was hilarious, and I liked that um, that neither she nor um, uh, Bill Hader are like I wouldn't. I didn't expect them as leads. As a matter of fact, when I saw. Um, the you know the doctor appearance I'm like it didn't cl- clue at all that that was the love interest because he just wasn't you don't expect him to be the love interest he's this kind of geeky guy and I I I thought he was fantastic yeah me as too love interest I, I love that non leads got leads like that's that's great did you yeah. like LeBron didn't you think he was funny? oh and LeBron was amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's like you don't and I know that I I'd heard this I'd heard this and he he just he just played he played a character caricature of himself and so I'm I, again I'm, I'm seeing this as a storyteller and I'm like I want to do these these things and, and I want to do them visually too because you know Sean just finished this first screenplay for the company and um, I, I listened to a Robert Rodriguez interview with uh, Tim Ferriss and I'm just like you know Didn't I that make you all bona fide to make a I movie? always wanted to be a filmmaker and, and I I really do hey quick Sean before you tell your um, wait, 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 wait. I got a correction on Sean saying it's not 40 year old virgin it's knocked up that it's a sequel to oh, oh. thank you <laughs> okay, that's probably why I didn't have Steve Carell. Um, all right, so before just before Sean does this something cool, um, Amy asked us to remind everybody that there's an Ask Us Anything. Um, uh, I are we? I don't even know if we're current, so I don't even know if this is gonna this is gonna work. But those of you who are alive for sure, Thursday the 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 Thursday that's coming up, um, Thursday uh, the seventeenth. There's a our Ask Us Anything at 8 p.m. Eastern, and if you're Damn, on, the, we just do one. We're doing them every month. What the hell? Yeah, if this one's people running out of questions yet. If you, if you're no, on the oh my god, there's so many. <laughs> but Sterling, hold on, let me give this CTA. Sterlingandstone.net/slash/repeaters repeater um, is you, on the list, and she'll notify you when that occurs. So. Dave, this is a little early because we the last one was two weeks ago. And next week will be three weeks. Um, okay. But it's because the a month late will be in um, yeah, yeah, okay. in Austin, so we're just bumping it up a little bit. I was like, time's flying fast, man. Because I was like, it feels like we just did one. <laughs> we we did, we did. You're right. And you know, I don't have a calendar. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my my something cool um uh re- requires a tiny bit of a story, of course. Um, but I was at um, back to school night for my children um, uh, two weeks ago, and we ran into one of Haley's friends, um, parents, and I really like I really like um, these people. They're really nice, and I was talking to the dad, and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna go see this movie um, called uh, Diary of a Teenage Girl." Have either of you guys heard of this? No. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it, I know it's playing in San Francisco and Austin and probably L.A. and New York, but it's wait, wait, wait. Really... It's an indie movie that came out. Yeah, yeah, and you're, yeah, you're yeah, talking okay. about something yeah, related an to culture and you know culture, and I don't live near culture. So. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Dave, I'm curious to hear about the interview um, because this this well anyway, it's called I'll Diary of a Teenage Girl, and it's about um, it's about a girl who's coming of age in San Francisco in 1976, and. Kristen Wiig um, is the mom in it, and it's it's definitely indie. It's definitely off the beaten track. And he's like, "Yeah, we're we're gonna go on on Saturday. Why don't you and, and Haley and Ethan uh, meet us all there, and we'll we'll go." And I'm like, "Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait! Haley's gonna go to this? This is my story." Oh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, all right, that sounds that sounds awesome. I want to do that. And so. Um, then I, you know, I, I, I tell Cindy, and I'm like, but, you know, and, and I look up the movie on my phone, and I see that it's R, and they've only seen a few R movies, so I see what it's R for, and it's like graphic sex with minors, <laughs> drug use, like, like just a list of like everything that could be yeah. in a movie. It, it should have been an X. <laughs> and then, and then I'm, I actually think it should be NC-17. I, yeah. I, I well, to, to be fair, though, the girl is, she's not a minor, the actress. It, it doesn't like, matter. <laughs> oh, no, no, I know. I just, just because you're putting it out there. I just All right, it's so, not that kind of movie. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I see that, and I'm like, I, I feel uncomfortable with this. Let's look at the trailer. Yeah. So, so we look at the trailer, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I, I don't. I don't think so, and so these I are have some one of those progressive things. Austin parents. Right, right. I'm like, I think of myself as a 
cool dad. Like I do. No, no. And 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 I You're like, like your I, mom. <laughs> and I was like, what? What? Like I didn't want to. I'd already said I'd go. And I'm like, no, I I just I'm so uncomfortable with this. There's there's no way just, I'm, I'm. Maybe just, he doesn't know what this movie really is. I well, okay, so. I said no. Maybe and then he thinks I, it's like a lifetime movie sort of thing. <laughs> it's I, my God. So, so Cindy and I went and saw it um, two days ago, just together at the Alamo Draft House, which is the best place to see a movie in the world. I love the Alamo Draft House. And so we, we, Dave, you'll like this. You can order um, food while you eat, and you can pick your seat ahead of time. Well, I eat, and make I can sure order. no one sits next to you. It's awesome. Um, in fact, you and Redacted could go together and not sit next to each other. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right? So um, this movie is about a girl growing up in late 70s in San Francisco, very counterculture, um, and the opening line to the movie is, I had sex today. Holy shit. And then it's all about like her life of being like um, discovering herself sexually when she's 15. And um, uh, But the her boyfriend in the movie is her mom's boyfriend. <laughs> so he's 20 years older than her, and the movie is graphic. Like, I know she's of age, but she looks 15, and all the, like, like she's taking it every which way. There's a scene where she's on her knees blowing some dude for $5 in the bathroom. Um, there's just, like, it's just as graphic as any movie I've ever seen and totally should be NC-17. And Cindy and I left the theater, and I'm just <laughs> horrified that I know that, that her friends saw this movie and that, like, and it was hard watching the movie to separate um, the actual movie itself from the experience that I had dodged the bullet, you know, of. But, but, oh, I so wish you had just brought her. Fuck you. <laughs> but, that would be a much better story. But I, I will say that the movie is exceptional. Um, it's beautifully acted, it's wonderfully well written. Um, it's it's a really really good movie. It's it's kind of interesting how it's not exploitative at all, and it really could have been. But but there's I don't know. There's there's depth and sincerity to it. It's, well, I think it was a female writer and director. You could tell. Yeah, you, you could tell. Um, there was it had poise. Um, but anyway, anyone who loves a good story, and and I do love um, ideas about finding your sexual self, and like I, I loved the film for what it was. I just I can't believe that I was this close to taking Haley to see it because so oh my you're not God. bringing her now. No, I'm I'm proud of myself because we've been watching like Friends and Veronica Mars and having these <laughs> conversations. But I don't need to see her like. <laughs> Oh my god! Have you talked to the the parents since? Maybe they didn't know. No, but I'm going to. Like, what, next time I see him, I want to <laughs> have this conversation. I want to say so. Like, did you not know? What did you do? Like, did you have conversations afterwards? Like, okay, let let me rewind. Let's go back in time and pretend that you and your mom went to see this movie and it opened up like that. Would your mom like just carry you out, like rushing, like a place <laughs> on fire? <laughs> yes. She cover your eyes. Yes. Um. We, 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 with Cindy and I actually said we we were playing what if. And if, uh, um, you know, absolutely, we would have, we would have left. We just, we would have walked out within the first 15 minutes. You know what makes me want to walk out, though, is sometimes when I see a shitty book cover. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to invite Chris on. Let's leave that dangling. No, maybe, I'd, maybe I'd better not. Um, you're supposed to pick me up on that. Now I just look like an asshole. Come on, yeah. Dave, what do you do when you see a bad book cover? Well, if I see a bad book cover, I do run away, and I would never bring my kid to see a bad book cover. <laughs> Wouldn't because... it have been terrible if Sean had booked a ticket for his uh, daughter to see like a bunch of bad book covers? That would be horrible, and and that could be scarring. And you know, if you have a bad book cover, if you do a book cover yourself and you're not a talented designer, then you could be doing emotional damage not only to your reputation. Uh, to your children, but to the world at large that sees your bad book cover because they're going to look at it, scream, maybe even gouge their eyes out. You might even be personally responsible. I had to uh, talk to some people who took their children to see some bad book covers once. It was really uncomfortable afterward. I was like, did you know that they were this bad when you when you went into it? Filthy, disgusting, uh, reprehensible. Yes. Uh, and you want to avoid that. And the way to avoid that, 
is to go to 99designs.com slash SPP. They have teams of designers that will create book cover for you, the perfect book cover, uh, one that you won't have to be embarrassed by, one that you won't have to hide from your children and your friends and family. You can proudly display it and say, yes, this is my book. You can put it on the you could put it in the bookstores. Uh, you could you could put it out there, and people will say, "Wow, what is that? I want to know more." How do you get that? You go to 99 Designs. They have teams of designers waiting. It's an easy process. It's a contest. You basically tell them, "Hey, this is what I, my book is about. These are some covers I like." Uh, you may give them some examples, and within a week or so, you'll have just a bunch of people, uh, designers, sending you you know the cover. And you get to choose which one you want. Which one do you want? You'll have too many good ones to choose from. It's a quality problem to have. And you know what the best part is, Johnny? Um, that it comes with a free showing of an NC-17 movie. <laughs> uh, no, they don't do that anymore. Ever since uh, some complaints from in trouble with some that. uptight guy in Austin, <laughs> Texas. Uh, God, no, he wouldn't take his kid to see it. Yeah, it, it's awful. Uh, and he remodeling. calls, him, he calls <laughs> himself an artist, but really he's not. Uh, Yes, uh, the the best part is you have absolutely nothing to lose. If for some reason the designers don't come up with a cover you like, y you won't be forced to pay. Y you just walk away. Uh, but but guess what? That's not going to happen. It hasn't happened to us once in all the times we use them. So start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP. Use that link. You get the free Power Pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. And uh, that'll get you more designer time and attention. On average, you get about 185% of the designs that you normally would. So 99designs.com slash SPP. You know, I was wondering if we could do um, best of ad reads. Like, do you think, do you think they'd, they'd go for that? Because <laughs> we've had some... This wasn't one. Like, this clearly oh, wasn't. Oh, this was a good one. Well, but I, it started poorly. Like, it started with... Oh, it started great. No, oh, okay. Well, because I was uncomfortable, and so it works out. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I want to bring back the ayahuasca ad read. Um, I want to. Um, I don't know if Ray Ray didn't do an ad read for for 99 Designs. We should have Ray Chase come back on and do a 99 Designs one with us. We probably have to pay that fucker though, so I don't know about that. Did you see um, the, a Facebook post this week from um, Ayahuasca Joe's cat? Mm -mm, did not. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> tag me on you that. Send that to us. Oh, uh, you, you should have been tagged, Dave. Um, there was a a a jaguar, I think it was, um, or a panther, I don't know, whatever that there there is in Peru. But apparently, he was getting high on some ayahuasca and just going ape shit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Yeah. So it's it was stuff. tagged as ayahuasca Joe's pet cat. No. <laughs> All right. I did. Uh, I did invite Chris, so we'll see when he gets here. Um, uh, I wonder Kate, if I... got a comment from Kate yes. Morgan. She says, "I'm so enjoying Dave's unfettered glee at the idea of Sean inadvertently destroying his teenager daughter's psyche, <laughs> making it an inappropriate right? movie." Okay, so here's yeah, a her giddy story. Dave last week. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> Dave and I make some uh, edits. D Dave and I had a a story meeting on on the weekend last weekend on on Saturday, and. Um, it was one of those things where he, he starts out a little grouchy, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. He's just hating life, and we're talking about the story. And and there was this rising tempo. It was like Bolero. Okay, the whole conversation was like Bolero. And by the end, Dave the, was the music or the Bo Derek movie. <laughs> That's what I was just gonna say. Is this the one where she's naked all the time? And he, um, as the story got darker, and more and more lives were being ruined. <laughs> he was just getting happier and happier and happier. And as we hang up, you know, I'm saying, okay, do do you have everything you need? We're we're, we're good to go. We're starting this. He goes, oh, <laughs> and he 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 lists, he takes off on his fingers, all the things that are in the store. And he goes, this is my wheelhouse. <laughs> and he was just so giddy. And it is like he is a. An emotional vampire, like the darker <laughs> somebody feels, he he sucks in their their dark matter and he turns it into his sunshine. Wow. <laughs> See, he's giddy right now, yeah. just remembering all the darkness. I may need to go smoke a cigarette. I think that Dave's um, autobiography will be called "Remembering the Darkness." His <laughs> adder is eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remembering darkness on a wreath. Imagine that. I think Chris went in to get another um, 
another writing block. Yeah. He was he, that. Like, you, 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 that's not even a joke. He is like I. I sent him because I sent him. I knew that when. So Sean started his something cool with, you know, five minutes left, and I was like, oh fuck, I better tell Chris that we're gonna be late. And so, especially when I heard there was backstory, and then I. Uh, so I, anyway, I sent him a. a, a a late, you know, I sent him just we're running a few minutes late, you know, and um, he said I'm gonna he said I'll, I'll just get another writing sprint in. So how long are writing sprints? Um, they're as short as five minutes in the book. I did read the book and I did like the book a lot, but I kind of don't want to start talking about it till he's on. Let's just start talking about something totally unrelated. Anybody do any good ayahuasca lately? <laughs> I I have not. Um, you know what? I I, I, have, been, I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of edits made to this episode. Um, I, I can say um, I uh, this is semi-related. Um, Mo- Monica Monica Leonel has um, her Write Better Faster book, and I know she's coming out with another couple books. One that's on a, just a daily writing habit, and one that's on dictation. Which you know, all told, all four of these books really have the same message, which is you know, write write fast, write better. Uh, Monica is on track to publish 22 books this year, um, which is amazing um, and it's just really about the discipline of, of doing it every day and you know I, I know we're gonna have Monica on soon in a few weeks to talk about some of this stuff too um, but but I love I love what she's doing I love those books um, I like Chris's book a lot but it really the, the the core message of all of these is just to be consistent and to build systems and I think dictation plays um, a, a large role in both of their methodologies which I'm excited to talk about because I've been trying to nail that forever and I just suck at it. So. Consistency really, really is it. And and I like I said, I learned that lesson this week. I mean, I already knew it, but well, I won't go into the whole thing because Chris has just joined us. But hey, Chris. Be consistent. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. How's it going? Fantastic. Going good. You're um, you, I, I'm trying. I see you're doing a beard challenge with Dave. So um, Chris and Dave both have beards, and it's a beard off today. I think so. Dave's I like a little Dave's more clearly than Chris is, though. Yeah. <laughs> Although, in my defense, uh, I just hiked the John Muir Trail, and I shaved off my beard the day before I left, so it's been growing ever since. How how long? Uh, about three weeks now. Okay. Yeah, you're not quite as fast as me, but you're darker than me, and mine's like mine's got these like blondes and stuff. I don't like it at all. I want a dark beard. So yeah, this is a great way to start. This. Why don't you tie your? <laughs> <laughs> what is this a self-contained arc? All right, let me rescue Wait, it. Let Johnny, me rescue can, it. Can you change the name of the show to "Grooming Tips from Dave"? The grooming Tips from Dave. <laughs> All right. So um, Chris is Chris has Chris has a bunch of books, but Chris, the the book we were going to talk mainly about today is uh, five thousand words per hour. Write faster. Write smarter. Um, and uh, I mean, how can we not, right? With a with a title like five thousand words per hour. So, do you want to um, give us a little bit of background on what the hell that means? That's just crazy. Yeah, it's a loaded title, uh, and it's designed to get your attention. Um, I work at a startup sixty hours a week as an app developer, so I have very little time to write. So, what I decided is, if I was going to put out the volume of fiction that you guys advocate and write, publish, repeat, I needed to be able to write fast. So, I started tracking my writing. I wrote myself an app to help accelerate that process, and I found before very long I was able to hit 5,000 words per hour. So I had a lot of authors that said, yeah, sure, that's that's not possible. Um, and I kind of took that as a, a challenge. I wrote a book that explained exactly how I did it with actionable steps in a system that they can use to kind of repeat what I did, and quite a few authors have done exactly that. So um, obviously the, that book would be 5,000 words per hour, but... Um... Let's. I mean, I'm. There's a lot here. But, and Let's I start hear about with. Are process, you bothered I, by how much Dave hates you? Because <laughs> <laughs> he he thinks you're a dirty, rotten liar right now. So, um, Dave, wh- where? I don't know. Is it is it dictation that does most of that heavy lifting for you? If you're going to hit a number like five thousand, because that's not even possible to type that fast, right? It is. So 5,000 words per hour is 83 words a minute. So yeah, that sounds fast. Um, and part of what drags my average up is definitely voice dictation. So the human voice, um, you speak about 150 words a minute. Or if you're Sean, 250. (laughs) (laughs) Or if you're Sean, 250. So that that definitely does drag it up, but the majority of my writing is done um, on the keyboard. And if I'm just doing that, if you take away the voice dictation, my average is 3,900 words an hour. 
that's phenomenal. Okay, so uh, what is um, I, I guess how often how clean a draft does that leave you with? Uh, initially, it's it's it was not very clean. The more that I practiced, uh, the better that I, that I got, and the the cleaner the work became. So. I, I kind of use neuroscience to build this whole process, and the idea is that you can install a writing habit that sort of obfuscates all the mechanics. You're not thinking about the paragraphs and the words necessarily. You're getting into the heads of the characters, and you're just writing in the flow state. And as soon as you get there, you start producing some of your best work. So the goal is not just quantity. It's higher quality. What, what's um, I, what I was going to start with there was the app. So you said you decided to create an app to help you Right? Uh, faster? What's, what's the story? What's <laughs> yeah, the story? So yeah, being, I, I don't have the app. I want to hear about that. I have the unlocked so, version. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so being uh, an app developer, I wrote an iPhone app, and what it does is conducts writing sprints, and that's kind of the core of the whole system. So you set the time that you're going to write for, and the goal is to write all the way through. So let's say we set it for 10 minutes. You write for 10 minutes. Don't allow any interruptions. Don't stop. Don't edit. Don't use your backspace key. Don't pause to think. You sit down and write for that entire duration. And your editing is going to come in an editing sprint after that writing is done. So what the app does is it conducts that sprint. It starts with a timer. And then when that timer goes off, you get a woohoo in my girlfriend's voice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and then you record the number of words that you wrote during that session. And that will calculate your words per hour, your words per day, and most importantly, how many hours you have left to finish whatever project you're working on. So, you know, maybe you just finished uh, your fourth writing sprint, and it tells you you've got 18 more hours to finish the novel that you're working on. And if you fail to deliver, does it send all of your naked photos on your iPhone to all of your contacts? That will be in the next update. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, can, so can, do, it, does it have to be like? Does it have to be followed by? Can you adjust it? Does it have to be followed by editing stage? What if you don't edit till you know your next round, like you know, two weeks from now or something? Uh, the, the app doesn't have the editing feature in there yet. That's coming in the next build. So okay. it, it's just conducting the sprint. It's sort of up to you to manage when that would happen. Okay. I'm like you. I finish the entire writing draft, and then after I've got a draft of a novel, then I'll go back and start the editing phase. That, that's... Do you think you've added... Um, have you added an extra layer of edit? Because I'm just... Um, I, I, and I haven't tried this, so I, I don't know. But I know um, Sean's told me that my drafts tend to be very clean, like... Because I, I only know my drafts. I Humble know brag. Drafts. Well, no, no, my, but this and is your my ads point. are I'm so thinking, chiseled. <laughs> yes, yeah, so chiseled. But I'm thinking if I, if I did this, I'm thinking there's absolutely no way that at four to five thousand words, I would actually produce anything near as clean. And I'm, I think it might for me add another layer of editing. And I'm just wondering, has it for you, or has it? Have you totally? Um, you know. it, it does not, but I, I didn't set out immediately trying for 5,000 words an hour. So initially I was right around 2,000 words per hour, and then every time I wrote, I got a little faster. So the goal is to write as fast as you realistically can get a good draft out, and the longer you follow that process, the faster you'll write. Do you, when you do a 10-minute, I, I probably could have just read the book, so maybe I could do this interview with Sean, who did read the book. <laughs> but um, but you, you do a 10-minute, and then is it like Pomodoro? Is there a break, and then, and then you do it again? Or do, do you just kind of do it? Because you said your schedule is such that you can only fit in these short sprints. How, how would most people use it, do you think? Uh, the vast majority of people start off with five-minute sprints, the people who are emailing me. Most people get up to 20 or 30 minutes. Very few people write longer than that. And I've only had one person who writes longer than 60 minutes, so the counter in the app only goes up to 60. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't find out until recently that somebody would actually be able to write and keep cranking out words for longer than that. So again, most of them are a lot shorter. And then and, when do you when do you do your next sprint? Like the next day, typically, or how long do people wait between sprints? So the way my day works is I will do um, a 30-minute sprint on the bus on the way into work. I'll stop for five or ten minutes, very much like the Pomodoro method, to make sure I know what I'm writing in the next sprint, and then I'll immediately do another half-hour sprint. Um, then the next one will happen at the end of the day when I'm taking the bus on the way home. Uh, on the weekends, I, I fit them in where I can, depending on what my day looks like. Okay, I'd like to pause at this point, and to anybody who says they don't have time to write, this isn't, like, he's writing on the fucking bus. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, he developed an app because he wanted to get it in short periods of time. We were talking about this while killing time before you came on, Chris, but it's, it's like consistency is sort of the magic ingredient. Like, you, you have to do it every day. Um, do you, or, or at least five days a week, like, do you, do you pretty yeah, do you much write every day? Is this pretty religious? Oh, yeah, I do it seven days a week, and I do it for a very good reason, which I'm sure you guys have covered, um, and that's that it will become a habit. So you have a part of your brain called the basal ganglia where your habits live. 
And if you do something every day, whether it's you know drive a car, go to Starbucks, that will eventually become a routine that your brain executes without you thinking. My so what basal ganglia is filled with bad habits. <laughs> you need to get in there and have a basal ganglia abotomy. <laughs> um, what uh, what are the other pieces of this? Uh, you said that the, the app is sort of the key system. Um, what what are some other like best practices or things that people need to know when they're working at these? Wait speeds? wait can I can I interject there because um, uh, mm -hmm. well the the app isn't really the key system there. I think the app is 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 a tool. But in the book, um, Chris says that there's there's spreadsheets that he uses too. And if you don't have the if you don't have the app, you can just use spreadsheets. Which I think the point is it's the tracking that is the key. I, I think it's um, you know, it's about kind of measuring what you do, and you know, it's that that whole adage that you can't improve what you don't measure, right? So he 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 measures. And when I was first trying to get my my word count up, like I don't know, two or three years ago, uh, whenever that was, um, I don't do it anymore. But I did uh, fastidiously track my word counts, what time of day it was, um, you know, what I was eating, <laughs> um, you know, like a lot of stuff that seems like it's irrelevant, but that's what you do when you're looking for patterns, right? And, and I consistently, I, I think I was for uh, about three months, I was hitting 25 words an hour, never, ever less. Um, oh, my God, 25 words an hour? How did you manage that? <laughs> 2,500. <laughs> and, um, but then I Show got off. out of the habit, and, you know, it's been a long time since I've hit 2,500 words an hour because I'm, I'm, I'm out of practice, and I think that that's it. It's about tracking it, find out your best routines, and then do that over and over. Yeah, I can tell Sean's read the book because he, he pretty much said what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> you, you, definitely, you definitely need to track your writing. And so what I do, um, I'm using a beta version of the app, I dump my writing sprints into a spreadsheet, and it tracks exactly what time the sprint started, when it ended. So you'll find patterns, like in the mornings around 6.30 or so, I write much, much more quickly than I will in the evenings. So if I'm writing on the way home on the bus, my words per hour will fall to almost half of what it is in the morning. Now, do you think that, uh, I mean, this app seems ideal for somebody that is, you know, they're, they're trying to get time in, uh, they, they have another job or something. What about somebody that their full-time job is writing? Do you think that hitting 5,000 words an hour, uh, how many hours would you go? I mean, is there some point where it's like, okay, you know, that's enough. Now, now everything's just turning to crap. Definitely. Two hours for me is the limit. I mean, I know people um, like Amanda Lee that can do eight hours in a day, and, and that just you know blows my mind. But for me, if I'm doing four to 5,000 words an hour, two hours in my brain is mush. Okay. What does that typically edit down to for you? Or did, are you <clears throat> does it decrease, or does it just sort of stay about the same? I'm just wondering, um, you know, because it's about efficiency and productivity. So if you produce, say, 8,000 words in, in your two hours, um, do you have any idea what that ends up being in finished draft terms? Usually or right around uh, 8,000 words. So what I'll do when I go through an editing sprint is I'll, I'll cut entire chapters or sections of a chapter that need to go, but by and large, the vast majority of the things that I churn out will make it into the final draft. So most recently, um, I read a, a novel called Project Solaris that took about 13 days to, to write, and probably 85% of the first draft is still in there on the third draft. See, this yeah. is all very... Very, this is a vindication of the stuff that um, I know Sean's talked about it a lot. I've, I've mentioned it some. Is between um, in the in realm and sands with Sean and I, um, the stuff that I write quickly in inevitably is the stuff that requires virtually no editing. Um, I will labor like I've I've been working on um, on Annihilation recently. It's the fourth book in the Invasion series, and there's some stuff we have to figure out. And I can tell there are chapters in that book, which is supposed to be a page-turning sort of read, that I will, um, uh, I'll, I'll write those at like, I don't know, like 1,400 words per hour, which for me is is quite slow. And it's the chapters where I top 2,000 words per hour. Like, those are the ones that don't even require touching, usually. It's just, it's something about that. Right. It's called the flow state, so, or being in the zone. Um, this is neurologically something that scientists have, have studied. It's something that everybody in almost every profession can do. And so if you look back at your best work, like you just said, it's happening at a much, much faster rate. So you didn't sit there and stare at a blank cursor and then do a sentence and then tinker on a paragraph 400 times, and that was the best chapter you ever wrote. You got in the zone and you cranked out something and you knew it was good when you were done. And I think that's true for almost every writer. So 
the goal of my process is to train your brain to get into that state on command. Yeah, I, I when I do write fast, and there are times I write very fast, especially you know when I've completely deleted everything and I'm down to two days to go. <laughs> uh, and th I think I find when I write fast, it is you know when I'm in the characters' heads and. Uh, the, the hard part for me is even with beats, though, uh, like when I return to the story and either I don't like what I already have or I just don't feel confident in the story, I just know what I'm doing is, is the wrong way to go. It's basic. like when I sit down, I have to become reacquainted with the characters again. And it, that, that's a part that takes some time for me. Uh, and that, that's a part where there's like a lot of stopping and starting and stalling and slow writing and deleting uh, but once I find the characters again once once I'm there I, I do get in the zone and I can write faster Chris what do you do when um, if you do have a like I know that you're not, you're not supposed to stop you're not supposed to tinker but I'm imagining especially at the beginning for people you'd start writing and you'd be like I, I, just, I just don't know what to say like I don't know what to do here and, and a lot of people would pause and, and really think about it so what do you do to keep moving through that um, it comes with practice, really. So I started just like everybody else with a five-minute sprint. And in five minutes, you're only going to write a couple hundred words, and that's if you're going at a pretty good clip. So you, you're only going to bust out seven or eight paragraphs at, at the most. It's pretty easy to know what you're going to write. And as you get better at plotting, it's easier to do that for longer spurts. But when I do occasionally run into a roadblock, I'll hit pause or I'll stop the sprint at that point. Um, get out of the scene, give some more careful consideration to what it is I'm going to write, and then start another script. If you get really, really stuck, um, there's not a lot of point, I think, to continuing writing if you don't know what it is you're going to write, because I almost never have anything good come from that. <laughs> no, that's all the stuff that gets cut and edited later anyway, for sure. Um, the, the hardest part I have now, if you don't mind uh, moving to talking about dictation a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, because certainly that is a way to, to really shortcut stuff. Actually, before we do that, I, I want to ask you about the editing, because um, that was the one part in the book where like, I just couldn't relate to it. Because for me, when I write really, really fast, um, that requires a longer, more thorough edit. And it seemed, uh, unless I read it wrong, it seemed the reverse was true for you. Um, your your edits take substantially less time than your 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 writing, right? Mm -hmm. like you you get through edits pretty fast. And and I'm the opposite. If I write something really fast, I'm going to spend more time editing it than I did writing it um, that first time through. Uh, so I guess it's it's that thing where um, you know, I mean, there are there are exceptions. But unlike to that. Chris, John, so most uh, you know, a lot of what you see is that. That, that's true. Um, my my biggest roadblock to dictation is just flat out flow. Um, uh, you know, I've I've tried it maybe twenty times. I try it every year for sure when Dragon comes out with their new <laughs> their new version of the the software, and I get it. I'm like, I'm gonna do it this time, and <laughs> and it just never works out for me. And it's because I cannot find my flow. I, it's just so not the way I write, and I hate saying comma and period and, and all of that. Like I just want to tell a story, and I, I I talk fast, I think fast, but I don't think in punctuation unless I'm using my fingers. So was that a problem for you? And if so, how did you? get past it. it. It still is. I've been using dictation for a while, um, and every day at the bus stop, I'll be standing there for five or ten minutes waiting for the bus, and that's where I do my voice dictation. Do people um, look at you funny? They do. They do. So they assume I'm on the phone, I think, for the most part, but then they'll hear me talking about zombies, and <laughs> no, maybe they assume they I'm watching away? Walking Dead. <laughs> Occasionally. I think that's the beard, though. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it definitely is really, really hard to use vic voice dictation as a tool. It's gotten easier the more that I practice, but it took a lot of dedication because it still feels really weird to speak your punctuation. Um, it's been worth it just because of the productivity boost, but a lot of writers, a lot of people who have picked up my book, they're never going to get into voice dictation, and they've kind of abandoned that part of it, and I don't blame them. If it's not working for you and if you can, can churn out the chapters you want to churn out on a day without using it, then absolutely use a keyboard. This is um, so not a, a question that I would expect Chris to be able to answer, but it's occurring to me, so why not ask it? Uh, I wonder if there's uh, anybody who we've heard about who would like do like literally record it, like do voice memos and have somebody competent 
do the dictation, that knows where the commas well, and Yeah, you, you can. You can do that. And, and actually, that, that's been suggested to me many times. But, oh my goodness, would that get expensive fast? Because if you did that two hours a day, that's the minimum you're going to spend on a quality translation. That's $120 a writing day. So, like, mm. that that would just add up so fast compared to... And, <clears throat> excuse me. And to be fair, um, you know, the, the problem here really is me. It's n It's not the... It's not the dictation software because, like, Dragon right now, the latest version, it's pretty damn accurate. Um, you it's know, not it's, you, it's me. It doesn't make... <laughs> it's, not, it's not making a lot of mistakes. It's me trying to find the flow slate state because I'm writing verbally rather than... Now, nonfiction is much easier. Uh, nonfiction, dictation, I, I don't really have a problem with. Um, I could do that. I could, I could write nonfiction books... Um, with dictation without a problem. Writing online, in fact, was written in large part dictation, and that was four or five years ago. Um, so I, I can do dictation, but but fiction, it just feels different, and I, I have yet to actually have um, a... I've done it. I've, I've hit probably 3,000 word an hour dictation sessions, but they never feel natural, and I always end up going back to the keyboard just because it feels more native. But long term, I want to figure it out, not just for productivity, but I want to save my fingers. And I, I just it's a it's a nut I want to crack and I just have not been able. I, I would think that that's just gotta come down to practice. I mean, honestly, because there's nothing inherently different about you hitting a comma and you saying a comma. Like, I mean, you do have to say it, but it's it that doesn't make a lot of sense. Because that by the way, I'm not that I'm exactly the same, if not more. Um, with Sean, like I, I, I can't imagine. There's something that I do get into a flow, and I, I can, I can hit typing. I can hit about 2,500 words per hour. And unlike what Sean said, um, is true of him. It, it's, it tends to be very clean. If I go that fast, it's, it's usually very clean. And so it's kind of a double win. It's like faster typing and less editing. Um, but that just doesn't happen. That flow doesn't happen with dictation. But I would guess that if you just forced your way through it. Um, you know, I've told the story about the headphones that I wear, and I listen to music with lyrics, and I didn't used to be able to do that. And so there was this weird, uncomfort uncomfortable portion where I had to just force my way through it. And I'll bet it's the same. It's very much like muscle memory. So when you were learning to type and type at a certain speed, you did it by practicing on a keyboard. And the longer you did it, the more it faded into the background. It, it's been the same way for me for voice dictation. I don't think I'm as proficient at it as I am with typing, but it's worlds better than it did it was when I uh, first started it probably I don't know six months ago. Yeah, I always I come back what... to that. I just need to you know set a goal like do it every day for twenty minutes no matter what for a month and just do it. But I always I always drop the ball. I'll do it for a week and then I'm like this sucks. <laughs> I won't do it anymore. I get very we, Dave about dictation. We have a note. Uh... Craig Puckett uh, says, newest version of Dragon allows you to dictate via audio recording upload. Yeah, I, I did but that, it would, actually. It would be the same, um, same issue, though, because you just have to yeah. punctuate the recording. Yeah, well, well, I did that. I actually, I went on a walk because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm whatever, like, I walk every day. So I Maybe you should that. dictate from the bathtub. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. Um, I, I did. I, I took a walk. Um, I did it for three days in a row. And actually, it was right after reading your book, Chris, is when I did ah. this. Because I was. I was motivated. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get this right now. And I did. It was right after I finished your book. And I three days in a row. And I, I did it with dictation. And I, um, I recorded it into my audio, into my phone while I was walking. And then imported it into Dragon. And it was surprisingly mistake-free. Um, but it was like, I don't know. I'm telling a story while I'm walking. This is weird. Um, I, I think it's just a matter of, of training myself to do it. I really do. I just need to do it. Yeah, I would think so too. Um, I and, and as far as the weird looks go, there was a time I was just listening back to a story meeting I recorded, and I actually paused during the meeting because I, and I told Sean, um, walking past a group of running teenage girls right now, and I was talking I about that. that. Because I, I do it with my phone in my pocket and the like, head hands-free thing, and I even had the hands-free thing under my shirt because it was windy, so they probably just thought, There's this, what's this asshole doing? So, <laughs> and why did he invite me to that weird movie? Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, the number one productivity tip, I, I, it sounds like, is just 
you, you sprint like right. It's it's kind of the same principle as the Pomodoro is you you can't necessarily you can't really expect to maintain high speeds for prolonged periods of time unbroken, which is I guess what I try to do, and that you want to just try to bursts. Yes. Right. Although the, the sprints will increase the uh, the more time you give it, but one of the other keys is to know what you're going to write about. So you can't just sit down on a keyboard, I think, and and just sprint out. You know things you haven't plotted. So I do have a phase of my writing where I am meticulously plotting out everything I'm going to write before I sit down and do my sprints. Okay, I'm really glad you said that because that was something I was going to say and we got off on something else. So I was going to ask, what is the role and the depth of the pre-writing that you do both before beginning a story and in the middle of a story and how does that balance out? So before a story, I will plot out the entire thing. I'll start with the ending and then I'll plot my way backwards to the beginning. Um, I'll have probably two paragraphs about each chapter and make sure it kind of all flows together, and then I'll start writing. Uh, how long does that process take? Um, I've gotten much faster, so the first novel took me probably three months to do that. Now I can do it in an afternoon. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a big difference. <laughs> uh, hold on. I was about to say three months. See, Sean, I'm not that bad. And then he's like, no, I can do it in an afternoon. I'm like, oh, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes from understanding stories. So I've read a lot of very good books on plotting. Um, Libby Hawker's Take Off Your Pants comes to mind. Um, so did Anatomy of a Story. Both of them taught me kind of the core of what makes a good story. And once you sort of have that in mind, it's easier for me to plot out kind of how I think a story should flow. What about during? So um, oh, Sean gives me... Yeah, so I, I, it doesn't matter if I do this for myself or if I receive beats from Sean... They always change. And we actually, um, with Annihilation, which I'm writing right now, we kind of told ourselves we were we were gonna artif we were we were gonna force ourselves to to Stand obey rails. the beats. Yeah. Because um Invasion was written that way and, and Invasion's a real page turner and Invasion is very well received. It it's just it just clips. And I just basically did what the beats said, and I used to always do just what the beats said. And of course it's it's not. Like I, it, it wants to veer away, and so I'm just wondering, like, are you pretty good about staying to your own beats, or, or do you tend to veer off, and what do you do if so? I've learned to trust myself, so if I start thinking of something that wasn't plotted in the beats and it's better than what I had, I'll go with it. Um, what I'll do at the end of that sprint is I will make notes, which I'll attach to that chapter that say, okay, I invented this new character. That new character is going to have to be present earlier in the book, so I'll need to go back and modify chapters 8 and 13 so that I have an appearance from this character. And then I'll write the rest of the first draft as if that work had already been done. So what the, the whole concept of um, editing, you said you go through the whole book and then you go back and edit, but you said not everybody does that. So I'm just wondering where you stand on the whole issue of just get the damn draft out. Because some people I know will analyze, like um, they'll, they'll get stuck on the well, let me obsess and let me go back and fix what was there because I'm gonna I'm gonna quote edit, but now I'm really using it as an excuse to to reinvent history. Like, do you are are you more of I know for you personally, but do you will you advocate more get the damn draft out and then worry about editing, or do you think it doesn't really matter? I, I think it matters a lot. You want to finish that first draft because it's so much easier for you to examine problems in your story if you get to the end of a completed draft instead of being 60% of the way through it and saying, hey, I have this weird problem. Get to the end and then make whatever changes you need. And maybe that means that you cut 25% of the, the book when you're done writing that first draft, but you can look at it holistically by having gotten there. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with that. I think that um, a lot of this comes down to faith in yourself as a storyteller and knowing that, you know, I, I, I've seen countless movies, I've read countless books, I understand narrative, and I just need to get to the end and then go through it again if I need to go through it again. But that stopping and starting and stopping and starting and you know, self-editing as you go and then, oh, that chapter doesn't work, I'm going to rewrite that, it just seems very disruptive to create a flow. Okay, and you, you, can't, you can't build on yourself. You, know, you get better by, by getting to the end and observing and going to the next thing. You, you know, that's how you build muscle. I got a couple of comments here and a suggestion for Sean. Monica Leonel says, I agree with Johnny. It's just practice regarding the punctuation stuff. It sucks, but honestly, all that stuff happens for me automatically now. I'm often more comfortable dictating fiction rather than doing it on keyboard. The keyboard for me feels slow and actually pulls me <laughs> out, of, out of the book now. Yeah, uh, I want to get to that point where the keyboard feels slow. That would be Chris, awesome. Chrissy, and yeah, Chris, uh, Chrissy Moss says, dictation might be good for things like beats or notes instead. Then you won't need a lot of punctuation. 
Have you tried it for doing your beats? Yeah, I've, I'm actually using Dictation right now um, for use, doing those um, character interviews with the character DNA as I map yeah. out Devil May Cry. That, that's I am using. Devil May Cry. Yeah, today was the first day I did that, but but I did, I did, and I could only do it 20 minutes. I I had booked an hour, but I could actually only do 20 minutes, and then I'm like, ah, I just I. I, And the best thing about dictation is that if you like have to yell at your dog and you forget, then you have this random line about, hey, don't pee on that. What I what I love about the um the, the dragon dictation um that you can record into you know feed it in later there can be long pauses where you're thinking and it just doesn't matter like it doesn't pick that up like the, you know and that happened while I was out walking because I'll walk through traffic and it'll get really really loud and I just won't say anything and then when I get back to a quiet area I'll start again and it ignores all of that and you just get the words it, it's actually very cool if you just do it. Can you get it to ignore your Tourette's? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Mm. No. <laughs> and, and and my dragon's pretty good. Like it lets me get away with fuck and other such words. Stupid thing. All right. So um, do we save any of the app where it's available? Uh, it is available on Amazon or iTunes. So I've got a paperback uh, through CreateSpace on Amazon, or the ebook is Amazon and iTunes. Uh, Dave was actually asking about the app. Is the, the app? name? Ah. Yeah. Yeah, the app is also 5,000 words per hour. It's only available on iOS. Um, the reason for that is I don't know how to program Android, so if anybody is listening who does program for Android and you would like to build the app for Android, please contact me, and I'd be happy to get that set up. How would they contact you, Chris? Uh, Chris at chrisfoxwrites.com. All right, so you can find Chris at chrisfoxwrites.com. Uh, the book we've been talking about mostly today is 5,000 Words Per Hour, Write Faster, Write Smarter. And I just want to give a um, just a pop culture shout-out to um, Chris's Deathless series, um, just because they're cool. Like um, I, I, I haven't read them, but I, like um, my favorite is the pre-order for Vampires Don't Sparkle, because, God damn it, Vampires Don't Sparkle. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I like how, you know, you the first one is... Um, is uh, no such thing as werewolves, which is like, okay, this is going to be a real werewolf book, no mere zombie, and now vampires don't sparkle. So high five on that. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to let people know about? Uh, yeah, actually, um, Monica just chimed in in chat, and while we were talking about voice dictation, I thought about it. I think she just released a book on voice dictation. So if people were interested in learning more about it, I haven't read the book yet, but it might be worth a look. I started it today. It's already awesome. Man, look at this selfless motherfucker <laughs> sending out his do you want CTA to Monica. That's a gentleman right there. All right, so thank you so much for being on, Chris. This has been fantastic. And everybody check out 5,000 words per hour. And uh, we'll see you all next week, everybody. Bye-bye. Peace out. <laughs>